Well, first of all, I'm here to speak on behalf of the most oppressed, most abused, most murdered group of beings that has ever existed. I mean, when was the last time a chicken or a cow attacked a human being? How about never? A pig, a turkey, never. We're the ones that attack them. Cows or harm are nobody. Chickens have harmed nobody. We are murdering innocent beings. We send them to slaughterhouses. They know what's going on. They're aware, they're conscious. They smell death and fear and blood in the air. We cut them up into pieces. The animals are not willing participants. We're teaching them that it's okay to disregard animal life, that human life is more sacred than animals when every creature on this planet values their life just like humans value their life. We all suffer in the same way. We all feel pain in the same way. A knife in my throat is just as painful and harmful as a knife in a cow's throat, in a chicken's throat. Because people don't realize how much they're harming animals in their daily lives. Most people I know aren't evil people, but most people don't realize their daily choices support evil. So if you put a knife in my hand when I was growing up, even though I ate meat, said, hey Gary, go kill that cow, Billy, you must be crazy. I'm not sticking that knife in somebody else's throat. So we pay other people to do it. So I want to reach those people that are passively evil, that passively take part in this, and that's the masses. So I'm just pointing this out to everybody, because people don't realize how much they're harming animals in their daily lives. So as I point out, the steak, the hamburger, the chicken sandwich that you're eating, the schnitzel, okay, these, these pieces of meat came off the bodies of living animals who didn't want to be murdered, who didn't want to suffer and die, who didn't want to be tormented. It is the most profitable business on this planet since the beginning of time, animal slavery. Nothing comes close. Not cars, not gasoline, not oil, not computers. Nothing compares to the amount of money being made off the backs of animals, literally. I want to show people what's going on because if you watch the news, if you watch TV, the advertisements are happy cows. So I went to a slaughterhouse on my own to see what was going on. I heard their screams. I smelled death in the air. One of the most disgusting things to smell fear and death. Why don't they show you slaughterhouses and say, hey, this is where your hamburger comes from. This is where your chicken nuggets come from. They intentionally lie to you. I don't lie. I intentionally tell you the truth because I think if you saw what was going on in the slaughterhouse, no logical person could choose to continue to eat animal flesh. Uh, it is sad that we can't talk to kids about the truth, about what's going on in the world. Every second, just so you know, of every minute, of every hour, of every day, female animals are raped to impregnate them. Every second, animals are being killed. In America today, 30 million innocent beings will be murdered for a sandwich. Well, we're talking 12 million people were killed by the Nazis. In one year alone on this planet, 60 billion land animals, 90 billion marine animals are tortured, tormented, and killed in the world's most massive holocaust. That's just in one year alone. And when we teach children that the Jewish holocaust was evil, but then we send animals to their death, to the slaughterhouses in the same extermination trucks that sent Jews to their death, we're committing a gross error. Remember, I don't do things to be a politician. I don't say things that people want me to say. I speak the truth, and the truth is harsh. I know people don't want to hear that there's a holocaust taking place, that they're taking part in, but that's a fact. I call human beings murderers of animals. That's what we do. That's the truth. The truth is harsh. They must look at us like we are devils. We cut things off their bodies, their horns while they're fully conscious, off the cows. We cut the beaks off of hens. We rip the testicles out of baby pigs when they're born. We have treated our cousins in fur and feathers so horribly that beyond a doubt, if they ever formed an organized religion, the devil would be depicted in human form. Put yourself in the animal's position. Imagine somebody raped you to impregnate you. You gave birth to this baby. This baby was stolen from you at birth. That baby was fattened up with corn and soy and wheat and oats. That baby was put on a concentration camp truck, sent to a slaughterhouse, hung upside down, fully conscious, in front of all of her own species, screaming, terrified, in fear, knife shoved into you know her throat cut up into pieces where's the justification for this this is why vegans get so militant because i don't want to be a two-legged devil 
to the animals or to anybody. No injustice can live forever. Sadly, injustice can live for hundreds or even thousands of years, but no lie can last forever, and people are becoming aware. Change is slow. It took 400 years to convince white people in America not to own blacks. You can see why this is taking so long. I speak against speciesism in the same way Nelson Mandela spoke against racism. We live on a planet that murders animals, a speciesistic planet. Understand like a racist who thinks that their race is better than another race. Speciesists think that the human species is superior to animals and we have the right to harm and kill any species we choose. Where do humans get off owning and controlling living beings. Do you know that if you took humans off this planet, the extinction of humans would benefit everything that exists, the animals, the forest, the air, the water, the mountains. If the bees disappear, everything falls apart. This is how special and valuable bees are to the world. The issue is we just need to change the way we view animals. We have to realize humans aren't the only beings on this planet and we're not more important than animals. Because this is the first form of hatred humans are taught. Racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, heterosexism, these are branches of hatred. The root is speciesism. When you're a kid growing up, you're taught, hey, be nice to the dog, be nice to the cat. But that cow, that chicken, yeah, he doesn't count. Just kill them, screw them. Uh, be nice to the horse, uh, be upset when somebody poaches a rhino, uh, be upset if somebody cuts the fins off of a shark. Hey, but that uh, turkey, hey, kill him, it's Thanksgiving, it's a holiday. So the kid is confused growing up. So when we get down to talking about discrimination and why it's wrong, where it comes from, it all stems from that somebody looks and acts differently than you. If you taught a child growing up that, hey, just because that chicken looks differently than you do, that chicken has every right to live. That spider has every right to live, just like you do. How is that child going to grow up and look at a different person who's a different size, shape, and color? How is that kid going to look at that person in hatred with violence? Speciesism, by eradicating that, we can bring peace to this planet. You said my steak, I'm very big on language. That steak was never yours. Okay? That steak is a euphemism, by the way. That's cow flesh. That flesh belonged to another living being. So we always want to say leather when it's cow skin. Even the term bacon. What's bacon? You mean pig flesh? 75% of the animals on this planet are herbivores. Of course. But why do we try to justify human behavior based on lion behavior or shark behavior? Notice okay, you have okay, clothes on. And I notice that you have a cell phone and you have a computer. It is unfair to pick one thing that lions do that you want to mimic when you don't want to mimic anything else they do. You notice that convenient argument? We just want to do what the lions do when they eat antelope. You put a two-year-old child in a crib with a bunny rabbit and an apple? Let me know when the child eats the bunny rabbit and plays with the apple. We are purely herbivorous. We have no carnivorous or omnivorous instincts whatsoever. It's an unfair comparison. You're not a lion. And just so you know, lions are carnivores. Humans are not. We are herbivores, 100% up and down, physiologically. If your jaw moves from side to side in a grinding motion and you chew, you're 100% herbivore. If you were a meat eater like a lion, your jaw would only go like this, up and down, rip and swallow. If you sweat through your pores to cool yourself, you're what? herbivore. See, the problem that I have is when people lie about why they harm animals, that animals don't think, that they can't feel, that they're not smart, that I need my protein, that we can do it in a humane way. See, I we know. can't throw this word humane out there when we're talking about rape, torture, and murder. You can't put the word humane next to it. So if I go and meet a woman at a bar, I buy her some drinks, I bring her some flowers, I take her back and put on some soft music, some Teddy Pendergrass, and we dance, and we look in each other's eyes, and I slip her a date rape drug and rape her. Is that humane? Why not? She didn't feel a thing. See, because the act of rape is evil, okay? The act of murder is evil. You can't do it in a nice way. Okay, we have to stop thinking that there's a nice way. In fact, you know what the nice way to kill is? Not to kill. That's a nice way. I noticed that religious people love to worship things that we created in God's name. The Bible, the Quran, um, stars of David, the cross, but nobody worships anything that God created. It's the water, pollute it, the air, pollute it. Every, the force cut it down. Anything that God made, we destroy. Anything that we made in God's name, we worship. So my condemnation isn't about God, it's about what religious people do in God's name. Over the years, as I've talked to tens of thousands of people, I've noticed that people who have been oppressed, 
Jews, Hispanics, women, blacks, they always respond better to this revolution that I'm involved in because they understand oppression. They've been through it. They know what it's like to be treated like nothing, like their lives don't matter. People who have been harmed understand why it's wrong to harm somebody else. So I want to eradicate the lies and get down to the issues at hand. I'll show you hospitals full of people with heart disease, cancers, diabetes, osteoporosis, kidney problems, etc. All stemming from animal protein, the main cause of every major disease on this planet. Now here's what I love about the health benefits of veganism. When you're being altruistic, you should never expect anything in return. Right. When you're vegan, you get a lot of great things in return. Your health, you're good to the earth, because let's face it, the worst form of environmental destruction is animal agriculture. That's right. So there are some great benefits and kickbacks, but without a clear conscience, without mental health, we can't have physical health. So if you're going to focus on the physical health aspects and miss this aspect, you're still not right. I think when you put violence in, you get violence out. You consume discrimination and death, you're going to, you know, exude the because same some horrible people may things. Say What's wrong with somebody choosing to be compassionate, choosing to be good to the environment, so children don't have to starve to death around the world while we're feeding 50% of the world's crops to 60 billion land animals in the meat, dairy, and egg industries. We find peace on this planet by eradicating speciesism. You can start you know, giving compassion to the animal kingdom, to the insect kingdom, then you start living peacefully with the planet and with each other. And peace begins at the dinner table. Because we claim to be moral beings. We claim to know right from wrong. We claim to be compassionate. And as long as humans make these claims, I'm going to be in everyone's face and say, you can't do it halfway. The path to peace is through veganism. So it's logical to want to be vegan, to want to reduce and eliminate pain and suffering. Once I pointed out to people, most people, sane people, logical people, make that next step. It's thrilling to know that people are paying attention and making massive change. And as we go back in time and look at all the other people that we adore now, collectively, we all agree, Gandhi and Dr. Martin Luther King and all these people, Rosa Parks and Cesar Chavez, you know, they were not loved during their time. They were despised. They wanted to make change, massive change. It's only later on that a society looks back at revolutionary activists and says, oh, and he was great. He was just trying to break, bring peace and justice. This stuff has to stop.